Hi and welcome back. Um, this year I want to do a lot more experimentation um, with ink and watercolour, maybe other mixed media. Um, so I'm going to bring you along with me while I try out a few ideas, um, experimental ideas, and end up with these two very different sort of ink paintings. One is using black Indian ink with salt effects and the other is using black and turquoise Indian ink. They both use the wet in wet technique with lots of sort of tipping and tilting of the board and spraying with a water spray. Um, this sort of experimentation is a lot of fun, but it can also be quite messy. So make sure you've got plenty of newspaper down um, so that you don't sort of um, end up ruining a carpet or something like that. So I'm going to start off with two pieces of Milford watercolour paper. I'm using the back of old paintings for these experiments. So it's a nice way of not wasting paper, uh, but hopefully finding out some new and interesting things. So as I say, it's Milford watercolour paper, cold pressed, um, lovely texture cotton so very forgiving it will take a lot of punishment and a lot of um, wet in wet um, playing around and it's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape i shall have my board flat to start with but i shall freely move it around um, tip and tilt it as i need to to get the ink to flow on the page to create the effects that i want so to get the ink onto the page, I'm going to be using um, a glass dip pen. You can use any dip pen for this, even maybe a sharpened pointed stick. And I'll use a rigger brush as well, because it's got long, fine, flexible points, uh, point so that I can sort of move the paint around if I want to and create some nice, fine brush strokes. This is my Jackson's Indian ink. It's waterproof and it's a really nice rich ink that sort of splits out to some slightly brownish tones with lots of water. Um, so for the first experiment, I shall just start off using the glass pen, dipping it into the ink um, and onto the dry page, which is, as I said, flat on my work surface and just start to draw in some sort of gently sloping um, and fairly random branches. And I can slowly build up this tree um, as I go. So the idea here is to work fairly quickly and not be too worried about detail or being too exact, switching to the rigger brush and applying thicker branches and trunks and I want to work quickly because I don't want things to dry too much. And ink will dry quite, quite quickly if it's in fine lines. So I'm trying to get enough of a design on the page first before I start the experiment properly by using my water mister to spray onto the damp and wet ink. And I'm hoping that the ink will flow beautifully into the areas that I've used the water spray and start to give me some really lovely effects. But I need to make sure to start with this enough marks on the page. And I don't mind if some of them dry out because then that will give me soft and hard edges where the ink dries and becomes waterproof. So a quick spray, quite tentative to start with, just to see what happens. I think you can see that the ink is beginning to burst out. So then back in, applying ink onto the wet page now where there's some water and you can see how it, the water is just grabbing the ink and feathering it out into these amazing marks. So this is where I just have to sort of work quickly, but carefully making sure that I don't get too much ink on the page. So I'm back to my glass pen with its fine point, any nib pen will do, and just pulling some marks and lines from the wet areas. Back to the brush. So pretty much this experiment is going to be a bit of a balancing act between um, applying the ink with the pen, then with the brush, then using water spray, and then tipping and tilting the board as well, maybe spraying some more, and then, 
and then simply repeating the same process over again, but maybe in a different order, until I get the look that I like. So rather than me explaining over and over again the same thing, I shall now leave you with a little bit of music and then I'll come back when it's time to add the salt. So I think I'm just about done now. Um, the board is flat and I'm going to take my ordinary fine table salt and sprinkle it here and there into the damp, inky, watery patches and see what happens. I'm hoping that each grain of salt will just push the paint away a little and give me these really pretty patterns, um, a little bit like it does with watercolour. So now I need to step away from it and leave it to dry and I'll come back as soon as it's dry and we'll take a look. Well, here it is and the effects are actually quite amazing. Um, the salt has really drawn out the ink and pushed it away and actually really made it dry an awful lot paler in places 
but the patterns, the filigree of little marks and lines and, and shapes across the page is really amazing. It's so ethereal and beautiful. Um, I wasn't expecting the effects to be quite as lovely as this, so I'm incredibly pleased and will definitely be exploring the effects of Indian ink, water and salt again in the near future. So let's get on to the second experiment and this time using the black Indian ink along with some turquoise Indian ink, again using the wet in wet technique. But this time um, I'm not going to use salt and I want to see what sort of effects I can get just using um, the technique and the addition of some colour. So I'm going to start off painting in exactly the same way as the first one, introducing the paint to the page in a very similar sort of shape, um, alternating between the glass dip pen, the rigger brush, um, using my water spray, tipping and tilting the board as needed um, until I end up covering the page. Also, of course, using the corner of the store card to create some marks as well as the pen and the brush. So um, again, I'll get some music so you can watch this process um, and enjoy seeing it without me just uh, repeating myself. And I'll come back when it's time to add the turquoise ink and we'll see what sort of difference it makes. So now to add the turquoise ink 
and I've got a dropper bottle, um, like with a pipette in it, of Dr. P.H. Martin's turquoise Indian ink, and I'm going to drop it into the damp paper here and there, um, and just see what happens. And I'm already seeing it spread out beautifully, but the spread's quite limited because the paper is only damp and not really wet, as I've been working on it for quite a while. So I'm going to spray this beautiful blue colour um, and try and sort of get some directionality to my spraying so that I can coax this blue um, around leaving the central area of the tree sort of lighter so that I still keep that tracery of branches. So tipping and tilting, more water spraying and just allowing the turquoise ink to sort of run and flow and coat the rest of the page and we'll see what happens, um, see how it ends up looking at the end but I'm liking the look of it so far. It's like this turquoise is really pulling the whole design together. And I'm just going to lift a little bit of the ink with a tissue quite gently to lighten up a few areas just before I leave it. And I think I'm quite pleased with the balance of blue and black and the white of the paper. I think there's enough marks in between, some of these delicate traceries of little inky marks that have followed the water spray. So I'm going to leave this to dry completely and then come back and have a look and see how it looks. Now here it is, it's dry and I really like the look of it. Um, the tape got completely soaked so I had to remove the, the old tape and um, retape the painting so that it could flatten beautifully. But if we look closer then you can see that we've still got this delicate tracery of marks and some beautiful blends between the blue and the black ink. Um, it's quite stunning the different range of colours and marks that we've got. So again, I think this is quite a successful experiment and a lot of fun, even if it is quite messy. So I'll just see if I can zoom in a little bit closer, just so you can see some of those edges where the sort of filigree of ink is really delicate. So a very different look to the look that's created um, using the salt. And in their own way, both are just as beautiful as each other um, and sort of cropping them down a bit and looking at them like this together really helps us to sort of have a good look at it. So both use quite similar methods to start with, but adding the salt has made a huge difference. But as has leaving the salt out and adding a coloured ink into the black ink as well. So I'll certainly be experimenting a lot more with inks over the coming year. Um, so please keep an eye out and let me know if you enjoyed this and if you'd like to see more like this here, along with the more traditional watercolour paintings. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave us a like and um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. Thanks so much and I'll see you again soon. Have a great week and happy painting. Bye.